Okay, in this video we're going to go over how to graph functions uh, using t-charts or tables, okay? So just a quick review, and, and one more thing before I actually say that, we're going to actually graph two different kinds of um, uh, equations. We're going to do linear equations, okay, which you're all pretty familiar with, mostly in the form of y is equal to mx plus b. And we're also going to graph quadratic equations. And quadratic equations follow this form. Uh, y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. And we'll talk a little bit more about that here in just a little bit. Now the first thing to remember when we do functions is that remember we always replace the y with what's called f of x. f of x is really just the same thing as the y. And remember, that's how you say it in English. f of x. It's not f times the quantity x or anything, right? Just make sure that you say that that way. And the reason we do that is because the f of x represents the input, right? x values in any kind of a table always represents the input, okay? So if you would say something, and then the y value, like I said, is the f of x. So we would just do that. And inputs always, once you put it through the rule, or through the equation, or through the algorithm, you always will get some kind of an output. Okay, that should be one word. And remember, we also call inputs the domain, we call the outputs the range. Okay? What would be an example of that? Well, let's just do one of the linear equations because that would be easy. Let's say we have the following. f of x is equal to 2x plus 1. Okay? And we want to graph that. How would we do that? Well, we would need to choose some inputs. So let's just say our inputs would be things like 1, 2, negative 1, all right? If you were to say f of 0 would be equal to, and then go ahead and replace the x with 0, so wherever you see x put in 0, you would get 2 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. The ordered pair that you get here would be 0, 1, okay? So we would go ahead and start graphing that. <clears throat> so from this chart, and actually let me just let me just finish these first and then we'll start graphing. If I were to put in 1 as my input, I would say f of 1, replace the x with 1. 2 plus 1 is 2, plus 1 is 3. Here, therefore, your ordered pair would be 1, 3. Okay. And finally, let's just do one more. Let's do the negative one. So f of negative 1, my input, 2 times that is negative 2 plus 1, gives me negative 1. My, therefore, my uh, coordinates would be negative 1 and negative 1. And then you just go ahead and graph that, okay? So from this table, we are going to get this following linear equation. 0, 1, 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, and then negative 1, negative 1, there's my line, and there's my function. Now, why is this a linear function? What makes this a linear function is a good question. A linear function, if we go back up to the top here, is where the exponent, the greatest exponent, is a 1. And that would make it a linear equation or a linear function. In a quadratic function, the greatest exponent is 2. And look what and we're going to actually graph that, and you'll see what it does to the line. So the greatest exponent, in this case, would be 2. Okay? 
okay? And that would make it a quadratic function. Now again, straight line for linear function, greatest exponent is 1. What happens when we make it a 2? Let's go ahead and do that. And again, the chart, the table, is probably the easiest way to go. So let's say our function is f of x, we replace the y with the f of x, is equal to x squared plus 2x plus 1. That's the ax plus b, uh, ax squared plus bx plus c form, okay? Let's go ahead and put this into our chart. Here's my x, and here's my f of x. And let's go ahead and do inputs and outputs. Let's just do negative 1, 0, positive 1. Let's do negative 2 and positive 2 as well. And you'll see why I chose five inputs. Now, let's start. f of negative 1 is negative 1 squared. 2 times negative 1 plus 1. What's my output going to be? Let's calculate. Negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 plus 1. That's going to give me, adding all that up, 0. My output, therefore, is 0. My coordinates are negative 1, 0. Let's keep going. Let's make our input 0. f of 0 is equal to 0, whoop, zero squared plus 2 times 0 plus 1. That's going to give me 0 plus 0 plus 1. My output is going to be 1. My coordinate, therefore, is 0, 1. Let's put in positive 1. So my input is positive 1. Again, replace the x, because that's what that's just saying, right? That's the x. Replace it. 1 squared plus 2 times 1 plus 1. Now notice that every time I replace something, I always put that in a parentheses. And that's just a good way of keeping track. And you, uh, I just take the extra couple seconds to write that parentheses. And you'll keep track of your numbers better. That's going to give me 1 plus 2 plus 1. That's going to give me 4. My output, therefore, is 4. My coordinate is 1, 4. <clears throat> Let's continue on with the last two numbers. And that's negative 2. So input negative 2. That is going to give me negative 2 quantity squared. 2 times negative 2. Now notice if I hadn't put that in parentheses, I would have squared the 2 and then made it negative, but I can't do that, right? So that's going to actually give me positive 4 plus a negative 4 plus 1. That means that that's going to be, when I add all that, those cancel, I get 1. My output is therefore going to be 1. My coordinate is going to be negative 2 positive 1. Now let's just start to graph this, all right? I'll, I'll leave this fifth one off for just a second, but let's graph this, and you'll see what's going to start to happen. My coordinates are negative 1, 0. So negative 1, 0. There it is. The next one is 0, positive 1. So 0, positive 1. Next coordinate is 1, 4. There's 1, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let's do the next one, negative 2, positive 1. So it looks like this is starting to go like this. Let's try the positive 2 and you'll see what happens. f of positive 2 is equal to 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 1 going to give me 4 plus 4 plus 1. My output is going to be, whoops, sorry, there we go, 9. My coordinate is therefore 2 and 9. All right, so over 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Here's going to be the shape. 
you're going to get what's called a parabola. Okay? Quadratic equations always produce parabolas. Now we're going to talk about the ax plus ax squared plus bx plus c form here in just a little bit in a different video because each of these can identify things like the vertex, where the x-intercept is going to be, where the y-intercept is going to be, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But for right now, what you wanted to practice really is just the inputs and the outputs using a table and then graphing them. Last little bit of advice. Whenever you do linear equations, whenever you see the greatest exponent is 1, do at least two points, two inputs. Whenever you see a quadratic, do at least five inputs. And my advice would be to do two negative, do zero, and then two positive. Okay? And that should help you. Now, as a final thing, I want this problem I want you to try this problem. I want you to graph the following f of x is equal to negative 2x squared. Tell me what that's going to look like. Okay? Good luck.